O, supported by LEAF, A, sales rep, and in 5,000 company, helping our clients grow sales by securing guaranteed appointments, qualified leave, and guaranteed contracts for their services and products across the U.S. I'm your host, Gil Pagan. You can find us on all social media channels and at leafasalesrep.com. Thank you for listening in. It's going to be a great one today. Yeah, awesome. If you guys know and follow us on the Sales Prospector Show, you know that uh, we love talking to people and to thought leaders in various industries. And today, uh, we have the pleasure of chatting with Chief Brand Officer for the U.S. Echo Sandberg for CP Skin. Um, she is in the health and wellness space. And if you all know and track the health industry, health and wellness is a booming industry, growing industry. Um, all of us uh, getting older every minute and we're kind of concerned about how we look how we feel and uh and uh echo is going to share with us what she does over there and, and we're going to talk about a little bit about what they're doing um at uh, cp skin so echo welcome to the show hi thank you for having me uh, it's good to have you um, i'm glad we can get a chance to chat and um, let's uh, jump right into this uh tell us a little bit about um your, your backstory uh, how how you landed in this um, health and wellness, um, you know, industry and at, um, you know, this organization, a CP Skin, kind of your background and uh, and uh, a little bit about you and then we'll get right into the organizational stuff. So go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So um, as you mentioned, I, I'm currently with CP Skin Health Group and the, the CP stands for Colgate Palmolive, which is our parent company. So So we'll talk more about that. Um, but I, I lead the, the marketing organization for our U.S. business. And, you know, as you asked me how I got started, I, going back, I've always had a love and a, a passion for marketing. And in the back in university, I, I felt like I needed a balance. So I also minored in accounting. And that's actually what got me to where I am today. I had a professor ask me to stay at, back after class one day and, and ask me if I'd be inter interested in interning for this company called Hills. And Hills is a division of, of Colgate. And I almost said no because it wasn't an accounting internship. And I decided to give it a try. And I fell in love with the company and, and the people. And they asked me to stay on. And so I stayed on part time as I was finishing up school. And that internship turned into a marketing internship which turned into a full-time role, and then the rest is history. Wow. So your background initially academically was accounting, and you kind of went to marketing, which is, you know, you would think, you know, accountants, I'm just making some generalizations here, <laughs> Accountant, accountants tend to be more introverted, working with the numbers, and and then marketing, right, sales, come more extrovert, and talking to people. That's that's very interesting. Um, well, to be clear, my my major was marketing, and that was my passion. But I minor because I felt like I just needed that that balance to to be well rounded. So I was definitely um, marketing focused, which is why I I had to think twice about the internship. But it turned out to to put me on my path for today. Oh no, good for you, good for you. Um, that that's great. Obviously, uh, uh, Colgate Palmolive is a a large a large publicly traded. Uh, monster of an organization, right? In so many different industries and, you know, products and things of that nature. And you're in a, in a particular area of that business, uh, the health and wellness side. And I know that when we initially spoke, uh, we talked about some of the, the products that are in your, your space. To, uh, I'm going to try this, correct me if I'm wrong. Is it Filorga? Is that Filorga? Uh, roll the R, right? The Filorga, L T M D. Right? MG. And then PCA skin, right? That's right, PCA so skin. Kind of, right, three product lines that are kind of in your, you know, mm -hmm. personal wheelhouse for what you're doing there. And um, tell us uh, um, a little bit about, uh, you know, those kind of products and, uh, you know, where, you know, who are they serving um, and, uh, and the like and industry verticals and, you know, that kind of, that kind of uh, discussion. Tell us a little bit about that. And I'll, interject i may i may pop in every once in a while and kind of ask you a question about it just by based yeah. on my curiosity alone and for the uh, our audience so go go ahead yeah absolutely um first with the company overall we're a caring inclusive innovative growth company 
and we're focused on transforming and protecting skin health. And like you said, that's uh, that's so important um, today with you know overall health and, and and wellness. And your skin is so visible. Um, so it's it's really um, a, a focus that we have. And you know I've been with the organization now for um, almost 22 years. During that time, you know, I've worked across four states. I've I've um, been an expat. I was in Asia for three years, and so my my background too is um, not only marketing but e-commerce, customer marketing, customer development. That really helped me, um, you know, get that 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 lens and that background to to what I've been doing today with the Skin Health Group for the the past three and a half years. But if you got the brands right, um, it's Elta MD, which is the number one professional recommended. Sun Care brand in the U.S. We have PCA Skin, which is known for peels and advanced correctives and, and real skin transformation. And then we have Felorga, which is really focused on aging. And what's common across our brands is that uh, we have products that are scientifically um, proven and endorsed and recommended by professionals. And for LTMD, our core professional is is dermatologists. You can imagine that skin health and and sun safety is is near and dear to to their hearts. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas for PCA skin, um, estheticians is is a core part of that business, and we're back in the back rooms in the treatment rooms um, while they're they're providing these skin services for their patients. And for Felorga globally, um, the business had been built um, based off of of the pharmacy model. So you have, you know, those things that unite our businesses that are also unique amongst the individual brands. So the Elta MD is the, is kind of like, I, 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 I put it into tears personally. So the Elta MD is like that MD doctor, that's right, um, um, Elta MD, right? The doctor kind of derm industry vertical and they're seeing their patient and they may have the product in their practice, uh, and they may, I'm assuming, they may sell that to the consumer, um, um, you know, through whatever mechanism they do that at the practice. And then the 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 PCA skin is at um, the facial place, right? Um, and uh, at all the massage, right? Where I go for a massage, they happen to have facial services. So it's possible your product would be there, right? Correct? Uh, and uh, the Filorga um uh is aging and where is that one yeah so i'll I'll, let me talk a little bit more specific articles so when you think of um you know our where we are sold today i'll I'll start with the first two ltmd and and pca skin um because they're a bit more similar in the u.s market um in, in brick and mortar so offline the core is um the the professional skin health industry so you have you can thank dermatologists or med spas, mm-hmm. and that's where LTMD is playing and PCA Skin. Those are two core spaces for both brands. Mm-hmm. The additional space is the spa channel. Um, might be where you're getting your massage. Oftentimes right. you can get a massage, you can get a spa together. That is unique and exclusive for PCA Skin. LTMD does not play there. Um, and then we're also across our brands, um, we're online in select skin e-tailers. So you can think of, um, you know, specialty sites like a derm store in the U.S. And then we have our own direct-to-consumer channels as well. So for Lorga, for the U.S. market, it's unique. It's an online-only model for that brand. And then the other two brands, we have that that hybrid um, skin specialty offline as well as the online approach. That's interesting. So my my immediate reaction as a from a sales and marketing perspective, why are the two in a practice again four wall environment, right? Retail kind of setup, and the other one only online, just at at a from a marketing perspective. Yeah. So it's um it's how the brands have been built. So both LTMD and PCA Skin are um were grown and built in the U.S. and, and built um, through the professional channel. For Felorga, it's it's very new. It's a new brand to the U.S. overall, and has only been in the U.S. market for the last few years. So that's that's a core um, reason for for the distribution difference. And um, it's it's a bit more. Um, you could think of the the model. Um, more like the the prestige um, Ulta Sephora type of space. That's that's where that brand has been playing. 
Interesting. All right. Okay. So it's based on a historical narrative of where and how the product um, formed and where the channels that it went to initially. And that's kind of uh, where it's been so far. And that there's possible Phil Ortega could go into another channel. It's just, that's just the way it started. Um, yeah, and- that's, that's the way we started. And right now, you know, we're focused on helping to you know, introduce the brand to the market and, and build awareness around the brand and, you know, helping people to discover it overall. And I would think that if you had the channels already in the derm side, right, that, you know, the aging, the skin, you know, that kind of thing kind of flows right into that channel. Not that you got to do it today, but, you know, obviously you got smarter people there than me, uh, you know, but just, just generally speaking, it seems like a perfect space to go continue with your product lines, right, um, into these places. Yeah, and our the CP Skin Health Group it was newly formed um, just a year ago, and we had all of our three brands working, you know, rather independently. So we spent the past year bringing the brands um, closer together. And so I actually came from the LTMD brand, and and now um, I'm working across the group. And it's really to help us look at synergies and opportunities, and how do we take strengths um, from from one brand or learnings from one brand that we could apply to another. So it's absolutely, you know, something that we will look at how we continue to evolve. And, you know, for the two, for Elta MD and PCA Skin, um, working with our, our sales force, our in-person sales force, and how do we help it, um, help them have the tools to make it easy for our professionals. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and for our professionals, you know, we, we sort of have the B2B side of our marketing, um, the B2C, and then the B2B to C. So how do we provide those right tools um, to make it easy for professionals to dispense as well? And so, yeah, the focus for sure, um, you know, up front has been looking at the synergies with the two brands that have a footprint and the similar channels today. No, no, that's excellent. Uh, and uh, I know that when we chatted earlier, uh, we discussed a little bit about where the economy was going uh, and uh, inflation at the time of this broadcast and discussion this will be around for a long time the podcast so uh it, the inflation is high uh and um people are stretched right for gas and food uh everybody including us and i'm sure you as well uh everyone is is has um their bite their budgets have gotten tighter and a lot of the products like this are um what i like to say nice to have right it's uh out of pocket right uh, i'm assuming not insurance reimbursable even though go you go through a derm practice correct is out of pocket is that um, you can so it depends so for some care some care it can be yes oh can be okay okay i didn't know that uh so for this i just generally speaking then let's say most of it is out of pocket you know buying the products online or getting it through your derm dermatologist or through the uh through the spa and uh, and the like and getting it there so um that that looking into the future since we're in um we're in february right now um uh, going into the rest of the year um and into next year uh, what do you, what are you seeing in the marketplace now with regards to orders um you know because uh, again if you're if you're you're using a retail model meaning the the um, estheticians and the the docs right for that product and the other one's online so kind of you seeing any shifting yet you know um in, in not ordering as much because people are a little bit depressed and, you know, they ain't got no money. I got to buy eggs, <laughs> you know, things like that. So give us your thoughts on that. What do you see in the market? Yeah, I would say um, before kind of talking what we think about, you know, going forward, I would, you know, talk about, I would actually look back because it's been a super interesting industry to be in in the last few years. Um, as you, you mentioned, health, that's a broader space and, and definitely, um, you know, for our businesses in the professional skin health space as well. We've been in a category that's really has consistently been experiencing double digit growth. And as you look at COVID, that disrupted the space, um, you know, especially for that that offline side momentarily, it disrupted the, the world. But it was interesting to see the innovation that came out of that. And, you know, practices were able to, those that were able to, create this online side of their business or the digital side of the business and compete through that time um, with an online site through social media, through curbside pickup, innovative business practices really help to continue to propel propel themselves 
um, as they move forward. So that impact um, and that shift in the profession, we definitely saw starting through COVID and, and that continues into today. And another you know, side effect, I guess, during COVID, people really understood that skincare is self-care. And the other piece, you know, we're, we're talking virtually today, um, what in the industry we've called the Zoom boom, where you're sitting there, you're looking at yourself, um, and you're like, hmm, maybe I want to, there's, there's things that I want to continue to enhance. Um, that also contributed to growth that we've seen um, in the category overall. And, and as you said, you know, the category growth is expected to slow as we move into 2023. Um, we're still confident in the year ahead. And I think that it starts with the products. And so we're focused on making products that we know can have a true difference in people's lives. Um, can it have an impact on their life? And in the case of sun care, it really is saving lives. And that's why so much of what we do in, in that space is helping to educate um, educate people about the importance of prevention. Because a lot of times it will take someone having that um, a skin incident to really change the um, their behavior when it comes to sun safety overall. So uh, we do believe that there's absolutely going to be pressures that are coming around um, but when it comes to to choices, um, this would be a category that people would be prioritizing and and we're focused on delivering products um, that provide that value that will be even more important during this time. Yeah, like on my bathroom counter, you know, I have um, eye cream um, and uh, and some um, shade cream because I'm a beach person. So uh, and I'm in that boomer baby boomer kind of age bracket. And uh, I, and I'm obviously looking at health and wellness and things of that nature, which a lot of people in my age bracket, I'm actually where you are, uh, but my age bracket, we're looking at that, you know, that um, those products uh, that are typically available, at least for me, uh, over the counter, you know, at a CVS, at a Rite Aid, a Walgreens, right, that kind of thing. And um, uh, can you elaborate a little bit for the, our, you know, our listeners that, you um, you know, the difference between your product that you're selling that you get at a, you know, at these professional places versus the over-the-counter stuff um, that I, I buy typically. Um, and, uh, you know, we had spoken before about uh, the online store, which I like, and I want to go back there and take a look again. Uh, but t t tell us a little bit about the difference of the, what, you, what are you getting in, a, in that yeah. practice environment, retail and CVS? Yeah. Well, um, I'm going to start with the professional first and, and foremost, because you're not getting that um, experience at a CVS. So they, and the importance of um, having that skin professional to help understand you, your skin, your skin needs. And um, it's tricky, um, you know, if you're thinking about acne, for example, and, and how you want to address and improve that, your skin is not static or your skin needs could change by your environment, the climate that you're in as well. So that um, professional expertise mm -hmm. to help to be your partner alongside, um, that's a core piece that you're going to get if you're, you're going in to see your dermatologist or your, your other, your skin professional. Um, and, and so then we're there, you know, helping to, to partner to find those customized solutions for you. Um, when it comes to our, all of our products, that's a key, um, piece that sets us apart and the focus of um, our broader company and, and 100% you know, for our, our parent company is, is to, to deliver the best science, um, to deliver products that are efficacious, that you can count on the results. Um, it, we spend, you know, we invest in clinicals uh, behind that so that it's, it's not um, marketing when it comes to the efficacy around our products. And, you know, you were giving the example of sunscreen again, one of the things, and this is, you know, how Elta MD became beloved in the space is the cosmetic elegance is the term that we call it around the wearability of the sunscreen. And that's really been a key reason that people don't wear sunscreen is they don't like how it looks or feels or smells on the skin. And we want it to be um, invisible and uh, transparent um, on your skin. And so that providing that great user experience as well as, um, it, the, the skincare focus of that. So it's sun care, that skin care and helping to, you know, Im improve your, your overall skin health. Cause if you think about somebody that's suffering from acne, um, they're afraid to put 
sun care on their skin to only make it worse. And it's so important that they are protecting their skin. So th those are ways that um, it's, it's the science um, and the efficacy and the experience that we provide overall. Yeah, and the, obviously the people um, having the ability to talk to someone. And 100%. The, I, the first thing that came to mind when you said that, you know, you have the bodies that'll talk to you and you know, about your skin and then you buy the product. It's almost like going into a, people may not like this example, but go into a a, a new car dealer or you can go to Carvana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the car, the car, you got, you got a dealership, you got somebody who's going to help you with the vehicle, right? Drive, talk, answer questions, service, right? Or you can yeah. go to, to the, put a, a quarter in the machine. Um, yes. and, Only we promise it's not painful. <laughs> that could be the bad thing about going into a car. Good the, point. The good it's like you've got somebody not decoding painful. your issues. <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's not painful. And that's good. And I appreciate that. Uh, no, and um, as far as like, are you guys working on anything, um, you know, new, adding more products to the line? Um Oh, are you, you going to work on these three primarily for this, you know, at least this year? I know the publicly traded companies think in quarters, um, you know, and uh, uh, <laughs> we're private, so we don't think in quarters, but I know you yeah. guys do. So are you, are you rolling anything out new this year? Um, uh, are you looking at new, or are you going to really focus on your three lines uh, for this year going into next? Yeah, I mean, for the, the broader company, um, you know, oral care is a key category focus, pet care. And, and I you know, spent a lot of my career in, in the pet um, division of the business. And then, you know, the skin health side, these are key strategic pet, priorities. We have. Pet? Pet. Um, pills, oh, pet. Pet, pet nutrition. <laughs> animals. Yes, okay, went, animals. I went from a professional pet food side and working with veterinarians to the gotcha. skin health side and, and working with dermatologists. That's right. That's right. Okay. I gotcha. Yeah. And I'm obviously people who know in healthcare that when you're doing, you know, studies, it usually runs, you know, with animals first and, you know, then it goes into clinical trials. And so there's, is, there is a progression there, generally speaking, not, you know, it's the same stuff, but just, um, you know, you know, that kind of thing. Um, no, that that's good. So you're focusing on the three product lines for this year, continuing to build that out. You said that the the CP skin is a new division, right? Over the last year or so, right? So yeah. So the well, and and, and just on the the last piece. So on when it comes to uh, innovation and development of our products for skin, um, this we, there's great science, and we can do that independently. So we don't we don't uh, test with animals. Um, we we work independently um, through other methods and techniques. Okay. Um, the brands for LTMD and PCA Scan, you know, as, as I mentioned, they're 30 plus years old. They've now come into the, the fold of, of Colgate and, and the sky's the limit with the, the potential and the opportunity. So our focus will be on the three brands, um, but absolutely because it's a strategic priority for the company, you know, we continue to look, um, would we expand more broadly? Um, so that's definitely a, a question mark. How do we maximize the synergies? And that's why we put the, the group together um, to, to learn from one another. Um, and then when it comes into the individual products, we have some really exciting innovation. Mm. Um, it's a, we can't, can't talk about it yet, but sure. later this year for PCA Skin, um, it's, it's going to be a, a, what I would say our, our biggest um, innovation on, on record. Um, we have some some other innovation that's coming for LTMD. You know, if you think about common challenges, a key challenge would be sunscreen compliance, like we talked about. How do you make it easy for people? Um, wearability, right. that's a piece that we, we address. We also look at um, making it easier to comply, making application easier on the go. Um, last year, we launched UV Stick, which is a, you know, a, a stick application. It's got the packaging type is really important. Like, how do you, I've got kids, like making it easy for them to apply um, because it's a, you're interrupting fun when you're asking them to put on sunscreen. And we've got some continued innovation in that space for application um, mm -hmm. to make that, that experience better overall. Wow, UV Stick. Oh, that's interesting. Um, uh, yeah, my, my, yeah, my kids are already older. Um, uh, I ain't gonna worry about that stuff. <laughs> yeah, at the uh, the the I didn't know this. The, so the, the the Elta MD and the PCA Skin were acquisitions. You kind of bought that right. line. Oh, oh, so this is this was a Colgate Palmolive acquisition of these. I guess I, what do you call it? the patented technologies or products? They bought either or bought the company out. The company, yeah. Mm -hmm. You absorbed them. I got it. Okay, so. That's right. 
do the, do the people who make the stuff actually stay or are they kind of like they want sayonara? No, it's we've got a, um, a, a great core group from our brands, all the three brands across and, and the, the third brand with Falorga is headquartered in France and it was a French based brand. And it's a nice then, trip. Did you go? Can you go there? Can you go for a trip and see the operation? Well, so I'm working on the U.S. business now, so I'm not going to the to the the office, but it's it is beautiful. Um, I'm sorry. Need, I, you said France. I need That'd to be nice up for that. That's a nice trip. Company paid. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Good. These were, it, you know, it's absolutely important um, with any acquisition to sure. respect what's there and what's been built, and mm -hmm. you know, with PCA Skin. The, you know, the innovation that was there from the beginning and that that focus on you know that partnership with with estheticians and part of my group beyond our my brand teams we have an education team and we lead in these the space in the professional um, uh, space on educating uh, estheticians we have peels as the core part of that brand and we certify estheticians mm -hmm. on how to use our peels. And so oh, really? we work with schools across the country. We work with um, practicing um, spas and, 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 and med spas to give them that opportunity to create services, which are revenue generators for, for them. And so we, we train them, we certify them, we give them protocols, and then they're able to take that and use that with their patients. Oh, that's so cool. I know, I know you're, you're putting everything under that one umbrella, you know, in the last year, right? To kind of, kind of do that cross B, B to C, B to B kind of thing. I got that. But if somebody wanted to, I mean, you may not be there yet. Maybe you're, it's on your radar. If somebody wanted to say, okay, where do I get this um, L to MD product? Where do I get the PCA skin? Can I go somewhere and lock, like put in my zip code and say, this yeah. is, this practice has it? Can do that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you can okay. do it. You can go to our sites, um, you know, uh, we, we have brand sites, so l um, and PCA Scan. We have our, and Florida, all three have brand sites, and mm -hmm. they are commerce enabled, so you can actually purchase from the site. Um, for for l md and PCA Scan, we have physician locators, so yes, you put in your zip code, it's going to give you um, options of providers near you mm -hmm. that you can you can go check out, and, and um, they can help you with not only l and or PCA skin, but your broader skin needs. Oh, that's great. That, that, that's absolutely great to know. Um, uh, no, that's excellent. We're chatting with uh, Chief Brand Officer Echo Sandberg. Um, uh, she's Chief Brand Officer for US uh, CP Skin. And uh, we're talking about uh, health and wellness and the products that they um, have under the new umbrella, um, uh, Philorga, l md and PCA uh, skin. So we're going to get to the, to the, um, lightning round questions now. Um, and, uh, I, I know that, uh, I think you had mentioned that you got two cats and a dog. <laughs> I do. Okay. I remember that. Um, so what kind of dog? She's a Jack Wawa. So she's a Jack Russell Chihuahua and she's 16 years young. Wow. So you had, you had her since like baby. Yeah, we got her as a baby. We adopted her, wow. and she's um, made. She's she's made. She's moved. Lived in all the four states that we've lived in, and um, she's she's awesome. And what about the cats? So the cats we adopted in Hong Kong. So we, she did. Our dog did not come to Hong Kong with us. We thought it was going to be too much of a move for her. So she stayed with my mother in law, who has a huge yard and squirrels and trees. And when we were in Hong Kong, we really missed having a pet. And so we were not going to get a dog because we didn't have our dog with us. We tried fish and we are not fish people. And my son wrote a book and campaigned to get a cat. And we went in search of looking for a cat and ended up finding a brother and sister pair and could not separate them. And now Fast forward, we now have our, our zoo here with our, our two cats and a dog. <laughs> wow, that's uh that's that's awesome. That's an awesome story. So you got some cats that are world travelers. Um they are travelers. Yeah. So they put them in a in a in a carry case and they put them on the bottom of the plane. Typically that what happens? We, yeah, okay. We do. And I will tell you, it was it was stressful, especially for the, the girl cat. She was it took her a good week and a half to calm down and be back really? to herself. 
Wow. Well, that's interesting for you uh, cat people. If you're going to travel overseas, be aware, um, you know, versus like a two hour flight somewhere is different than like 10, 10 11 hours, whatever that whatever that was um, to go there. So if you had a um, uh, the ability to go anywhere uh, right now and time and money was not the issue, where yeah. would you go? I'm going to say Europe, and I think it's actually a good time to travel to Europe <laughs> right now. You get more value for your money. Mm -hmm. um, but I, you know, I, I spent three incredible years in Asia, as I mentioned before, and got to see so much of that part of the world. So I would love to spend some good time in Europe. Um, Italy is on the top of the, the list for sure. Yeah, yeah, me too. Italy and Spain and that whole kind of circle over there as well. Um, if you... Um, if you have a superpower um, <laughs> and uh, you can only have one, okay, okay? Uh, doesn't have to be business related. I ask this question to people and they always, uh, because we're doing a, a podcast, right? And we're talking about business. Right. It automatically gravitate toward business. It doesn't have to be business related. If you had a superpower and you can get that power, what would it be? The first thing that's coming to mind is I want to be a time master so I can freeze it if I need more or I can rewind. That's my biggest professional and personal is I, I feel like I always need more time. So if I could, I could somehow manage time and, and have more time, that's what I would do. <laughs> very interesting. Cause if you can stop time, that's, that's very interesting. Um, this is, um, this, is, I'd love to peel that back a little bit, but we're not going to do that right now. Um, the uh, if coffee, Hot or cold? Are you a coffee drinker? Hundred percent hot. hot, but but my I this is a learning. So I just moved to I, you know I came from LTMD, so I was based in Dallas, Texas, and oh. I just moved this year to Phoenix, Arizona. They're both Stop. hot, <laughs> super hot. So I will amend that to in the summer. It's iced. <laughs> so what what's better from the what's worse on the hot 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 scale? Dallas or uh, Phoenix? Or oh, they're both the same? They're um. They're different. They're different because it is, it truly is a dry heat, but it's, it's triple digit dry heat. Uh, but Dallas has the humidity. So I, I do pick the dry heat over the, the humidity, but, but more than both was Hong Kong. Hong Kong is very humid okay. actually. So you got, you got high humidity and high heat. <laughs> uh, great. Uh, pizza. Love pizza. Uh, hot dogs. Uh, when I'm at a ball game. So situational, um, situational. Uh, right, right, right. Hamburgers. Love to grill. Oh yeah. So when you're listening to, um, when you do, if you, if you happen to work out or you walk around the park or you ride a bike, um, what are you listening to typically? Are you listening to music or do you do a podcast? What are you doing? I do both. I, I love all kinds of music. Would huh. go to any concert that there would be. So, um, depends on my mood, but I I'll, I'll flip through different music and then, I do have you know some favorite podcasts um, or if a topic if I'm interested in a topic I'll search a topic and and, and check what podcasts are are there. Well, wow, that's great. When you're watching or you choose or choose to watch a movie, um, or have you plugged into the Netflix generation Hulu and rather do home streaming or do you like the the theater experience going back into a theater? Uh, both as well. We have we we kind of cut the cord when we moved to Hong Kong, but now we have. I feel like 10 different streaming services. Um, so love a good movie, but yeah, I'm on my list right now is Avatar. I don't know if you've gone and seen the new Avatar uh -huh. yet, but that, that one, I feel like it needs to be in the theater. <laughs> okay. Yeah. For the surround sound and the experience yeah. and all that kind of stuff. No, I gotcha. Um, and when you're reading something, uh, uh, you know, your preference to read, are you reading something on a digital device, like an iPad or like that, or you're reading, or would you prefer to read a book? a paper book or a paper newspaper? Digital, because it's always with me. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's great. Well, listen, um, it's been great chatting with you um, and uh, talking about what you're doing there, um, you know, at uh, CP Skin and, you know, Colgate Palmolive. And those products sound really great uh, for the, you know, the population and uh, in the health and wellness industry. I enjoyed the conversation and getting to know more about it, uh, as well as our audience um, and uh, we will put in the show notes links um, to the sites so you can take a look at it. Um, those who have listened and watched the video uh, as well. And thank you for being on the show.
Thank you so much. You're welcome. Take care.